Let's listen as the choir sing for us. Let's all sing now in Holy, 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 which we sing through twice. Good morning and welcome to worship today. There are those who say you don't need to go to church to worship God and in a way they're right, you don't. Any of us can turn to God, can talk to God, can listen to God's voice anywhere, anytime. But there's something special about meeting together with others and blending our voices and our hearts with theirs. And even more importantly, we belong together. God calls us to be together because it is in our community that we are challenged, we are helped, we are encouraged, and we are provoked. So come, come together. Let us worship God, and we sing in the uh, hymn, Sing a New World into Being.
now I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to see how many of you like sweeties, Let's see if you can answer. I'm going to ask Scott to put up a slide and ask you to tell me what sweeties these are. They're not smarties, no. <laughs> I think I heard the right answer coming up from up here. Skittles, that's right, it's skitt Skittles. And apparently, if you were to put them uh, on a plate and pour water on them, uh, what color would they be? Because Smarties would be white. They'd all be white. But what color would they be if, if, they, if we were to pour water in them? What color would come out? You've obviously eaten your Skittles. You haven't tried it. <laughs> now, the answer is, it's a, a rainbow color that, that comes out because if you see all the colors that uh, are there are the colors of the, uh, the rainbow, a distinct rainbow of colors. And uh, like all these sweets that are in Skittles and Smarties and so many other things, all of us are different. No one is any better than any of the others. We're just different. As individuals made by God, we're amazing. And we need to celebrate that more because everyone is God's gift, each one of us. We're God's gift to each other and to the whole world. But it's when we come together and mix together then something truly amazing is created. God calls us to be together to help and encourage each other, to support and care for each other. When we do that, that's when we can, we can truly be changed by the way such coming together can brighten up not just our lives, but everyone's life. Let's... Uh, sing again in uh, Jesus put this song into our heart <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to miss Alan Hayes when he goes to Canada, aren't we? <laughs> Let's come with our prayers. Let's pray. Loving Creator God, giver of all good things, forgive us, we pray, for taking so much of what we enjoy for granted for each new day, for the many possibilities each holds, as well as for each person we encounter and for every experience we have. 
we give you thanks, everlasting God. When we fail to grasp the chance to do what's right, when we fail to offer friendship or encouragement or help, give us, we pray, the courage to start again and with your help to try harder, to do better. Help us, Lord Jesus, to say sorry when we hurt others or when we fail to live as you would like us to. Help us to mean it. We bless you, Lord, for all the blessings that are ours and ask that we might bless you in our love for other people. These things we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to share the worldwide prayer that he gave for all his people, as when one voice we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Listen now for a word from God from the New Testament, and Anne is going to read for us. The reading this morning is from Luke 11, verses 1 to 13. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say this, Father, may your holy name be honoured. May your kingdom come. Give us day by day the food we need, Forgive, forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone does anything wrong to us. And do not bring us to hard testing. And Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you should go to a friend's house at midnight and say to him, Friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine, who is on a long journey, has just come to my house, and I haven't got any food for him. And supposing your friend should answer from inside, don't bother me, the door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Well, what then? I tell you, even if he will not get up and give you the bread because you are his friend, yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. And so I say to you, ask and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive, and he who seeks will find, and the door will be open to anyone who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? Bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. Amen. Thanks very much. Thank you. Let's sing now in O God of strength and everlasting kindness.
give us each day the food we need. It sounds a bit different, put like that, from the way we say it in the prayer, doesn't it? Give us each day the food we need. In other words, day by day. Not a whole week's supply at once. Just give us what we need for today. I'm guessing we're meant to catch echoes in there of what happened many, many years before Jesus when the people of Israel were wandering in the desert and they were given then bread, which they called manna, every morning. But they had the instruction that they were only to take what they needed for that day. Otherwise, it would spoil that's hard for us, isn't it? Doing shopping more than once a week is really sort of <laughs> uh, you know, not terribly uh, appealing. Human nature nowadays seems to want to store in barns and squirrel away our food just in case. If you doubt that, take a walk into your cupboards and your kitchens and if you open the cupboard doors, are there any empty shelves there? Be honest. <laughs> and think, are there things in there you no longer, no longer remember when or where you bought them? Or maybe even things that are out of date as well. And the answer is probably for most of us, if not all of us, yes. <laughs> and that's the, give us each day the food we need. Need, not want. That would be the food we need to be able to do the work that we do to stay healthy. And I think too many of us have lost that understanding of food as fuel. These days we look on food we eat as something we pick and choose from. We take what we want and we turn down what we don't fancy. We have the, the privilege of having likes and dislikes. We even turn food into an art form. You know, is it, um, uh, if I can remem rem remember the French, it's la, la Nouvelle Cuisine. Yeah, that's uh, the... The, the best food has to look good on the plate. It doesn't mind what it tastes like. As long as it looks good, uh, then uh, that's... It helps if it smells good as well. And if it's full of taste and texture and color, then all the better. It's not the same for everyone in every part of the world, though. The Church of Scotland has strong connections with lots of places throughout the world where people have to grow their own food. And if usually because of climate change, the crops fail, they have nothing. Their cupboards, if they have a cupboard, is bare. Their families usually starve. The church has connections too with war-torn places. You've seen pictures probably recently of the bakery in Ukraine quite literally giving people bread day by day because that's all that they had. The people in Lebanon would tell us stories of empty shops with even the most basic shops, foods in short supply right now. People in Gaza are having an even more horrendous and challenging time. It's hard to imagine the troubles that they're facing if they are fortunate enough to get anything like bread to eat. But that's the thing about the prayer that Jesus says, that it taught us. It says, give us each day the food we need. It says, us us, not me, us. Wherever we are, we pray those words so often and so lightly. Could it be that God has already provided 
all the food that God's people need in this world. But instead of everyone taking what they need and sharing the rest, we hoard or store or waste and others struggle. Not with food wasting in their cupboards, but usually in stalled aid lorries. Give us, give us, day by day, the food we need. Us, you, me, everyone, everywhere. Let's sing in, you are called to tell the story. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, I'm sure you'll agree it was definitely worth including. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's all sing now together in You Are Called to Tell the Story.
Jesus is asked the question, teach us to pray. When it comes to prayer, Jesus says, the first thing that we should do is give God his place. Then we should ask God what it is that, for what it is that we need, both physically in the food that we eat, spiritually in the forgiveness, the fresh starts, all that we need in that sense. And Jesus said we need to do that together. Give God his place. Ask God for what we need to keep us healthy in body, mind, and spirit. And do that together. That last bit is essential. Jesus doesn't say, when you pray, say, my Father in heaven. He says instead, whenever you pray, always pray aware that you're part of something that's more than simply you alone. And so we say, our Father, our Father. So we say, give us our, this day our daily bread, not give me my daily bread. Say, forgive us as we forgive others and ask God to keep everyone from temptation. We don't just think of ourselves. Do you think we might have been overlooking this in community terms now? Focusing on a, an approach to faith that's too singular. You think we've been overemphasizing the personal nature of belief at the expense of community that we're called to be. Might that be why the church is nationally is in difficulties, not just in Scotland, but in, in many countries in Western Europe? If we're guilty of over-personalizing things, then we need to understand that actually changes the whole face of faith that we hold on to. Because if faith is purely personal, then it becomes about what I do and about what I think and about what I say. It becomes about what faith does for me. And sight is lost of about what faith can do for everyone, for all in our community, for all of humanity, for the world as a whole, as well as our congregation and our community. Jesus, when he responded to his friends' request to teach them how to pray, he wanted those friends to understand that they were loved very much loved as individuals, yes. But Jesus was every bit as keen that his friends should know that they are God's not in splendid isolation, but as an integral part of God's whole family. And in a family, it's not just the needs of one person that matter. Everyone has to be taken into account. In a family, you need, for example, to learn to give and take, and also to take the rough with the smooth. And we've all been there, haven't we? Yes. In a family, when one member is down, the others can do their best to carry that one. When someone is upset, Others can provide a shoulder to cry on, to lean on. Any troubles in the family are the ones who rally around to help if they can. And when things are going great, that means there's plenty to celebrate with. And while that, there may be disagreements and fallouts in families from time to time, Usually, I find myself saying regularly to families that 
actually every family's got skeletons in their cupboards. You know, they... But to balance up that, there's the old saying, blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. And when it comes to the, the crunch, your family is there for you. It's when you translate these family traits over to the family of faith that you realize how important it is the togetherness of believing. It's what leads to our being there for each other, to our carrying one another, to our looking out for one another, and to our not letting anything keep us apart. Think of the people of, of Ukraine who so value the continuing prayers of God's people around the world for them. Think of the people of the Middle East. Whatever faith they might hold, or if, even if they hold no faith at all, who long for us to keep pressing for ways to help people in that part of the world to live in and for peace with all their neighbors, not just a passing peace, but a lasting peace. Think of people in other countries, so often under threat, who draw great strength from people praying for them and supporting them. And it works the other way too. Those people and so many more pray for and root for us in the challenging times that we face. We are in this together. God's prayer encourages us all to give God God's place. It encourages us to look for God's kingdom to come so that here on earth it might be as it is in heaven. That prayer also invites us to ask God for all God's people, all God's people, to have enough for this day, to be forgiving, knowing that too, we too are forgiven by others, all others. And Jesus' prayer longs for us all to be led by God from temptation, all of us, because that's when God's kingdom will come and the power and the glory will be God's forever and ever. So be it. Amen. Let's sing in the bright wind is blowing the bright wind of heaven. Can I draw your attention to the intimations? Uh, word of thanks to all who have contributed to the, the food bank 
again today, and uh, I'll leave you to read the, um, the, uh, <coughs> the, the rest of the intimations for yourself uh, with that. Um, <coughs> can we extend to everybody around about uh, the, the welcome to, to worship and uh, a hand of friendship today, just to emphasize that we are together, right? No, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm really glad you did because okay. I just looked at the, the form that I'd made up before. So. It sounded as though you had more than three notes there. <laughs> Well, it's certainly it's true. One thing that we're very good at doing together is talking, isn't it? <laughs> and that, that's, that's very positive. Uh, so, uh, but it's <coughs> with sadness that uh, I, I intimate that I heard at the end, end of the week that this is Evelyn McMath, uh, a member of our congregation, uh, died. And uh, her funeral will be on the 27th of August at 2 p.m. at Mason Hill at the crem crematorium. Uh, so that's uh, the, uh, our thoughts go out to her family and uh, to all who knew her. Uh, and uh, <coughs> can we, uh, we're uh, privileged to have our, uh, our two uh, guests from uh, the United States again. So I think you're traveling back this week. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, we wish you a, a safe journey and I hope, hope it's, a, it's not no, without delays and, <laughs> or any, any difficulties. And please uh, bring, your, uh, bring our best wishes back to your, uh, to your, uh, your friends and your congregation. Okay. Let's bring our prayers for others. God of all, we bring you the concerns of the world which become the concerns of our community. Tomorrow is World Humanitarian Day, and to our dismay, there are more and more places in this world requiring humanitarian assistance every single day. There is suffering through drought, through flooding and natural disasters made worse by human failure to act or made worse by human interaction in wars in not overcoming the overwhelming temptation of human greed and power. How can we hear your promises about a way to live when so many people don't hear that and don't have the same promises made to them. There are people hurting, not just physically, people who are feeling like outcasts, 
in their communities, schools, workplaces, even in their families. We pray for the ability to write stories with real possibilities that include forgiveness, acceptance, and relationship for all such people. We pray for your church that it will truly be a welcoming space for all people of all ages and all kinds. Give us grace to speak for ourselves, not out of fear, but out of love. We offer up to you our greatest concerns and our experiences of marvelous joys. In the silence, we come before you now and we bring our prayers for those that we know at this time are ill at home, in our hospitals, or in the care of the hospice, those who have been bereaved, all who are lonely, anxious, uncertain of the future, those looking forward with excitement to new beginnings. And in the silence of our hearts, we name them to you. Loving God, we pray for your peace to fill us, for your will to move us, that we may in our communities, whichever community we join, consistently communicate that story of your great and generous love that is for everyone. So be it. Amen. Let's sing now in Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships. So may you live deep within your heart. 
May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, exploitation of people, so you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you together can make a difference in our community and in the world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done to bring kindness and justice to all people. May we know the blessing of your wisdom we seek answers to the questions of life, as we seek to live deeply in the ways of peace, as we pray with and serve those around us. May God's goodness be ours, and well and seven times well, may we spend our lives, may we be an in the sea, May we be a hill on the shore. May we be a star in the dark. May we be a staff to the weak. And may the power of the Spirit pour on all of us richly and generously. Now may the God of hope go with us.